Hey, all you beautiful people out there. Week two is almost in the books. It's Monday. That means it's time to talk studs and stinkers as well as go through some news. Some big, big things are happening in the fantasy landscape. You do not want to miss any of this episode as you prepare for week three. Hey, Foot Clan. Today's episode is brought to you by New Mexico. Look, if you are a true adventurer who loves traveling with your friends or family to totally unique places, You don't want to miss New Mexico for your next destination. They have amazing sunrises. They have Route 66, mountains all over the place, amazing national parks. Look, there's so much to learn about New Mexico. To do that and plan your trip, visit NewMexico.org. New Mexico. True. Welcome. To the Fantasy Footballers Podcast, coming to you from pristineauction.com studios with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Welcome into the Fantasy Footballers Podcast for Monday, September 16th. We're back. Most of week two in the books. We've still got the Monday night football game. Browns, Jets, we'll talk about it. A lot of reaction to the weekend. Got the stud muffins on the show today. The stinkers of the week. Mm. All them big boy players with their big boy Mm. pooping of their pants. Yes. Jason has a slightly new twang to his voice. You could hear it on the opener. You had a little, little twang. Also, howdy, folks. How many packs a day are you <laughs> up to now? I'm twelve packs a day now. <laughs> I understand that, I, and I know the internal struggle here for you is you've been laboring through. I mean, you're you're in clinical trials at this point. I have uh, unbelievable things coursing through my blood. <laughs> Whatever Walgreens can help me with, uh, I I am I am on it. I'm trying to get better for you, Footland. It, sometimes it takes the voice a little while, and um, you know it helps if you have a nice New Mexico ad read if at the I beginning. Got, if I got the twang, I think yes. it's okay. I need to sing me some country songs. <laughs> I could crush some country. <laughs> Josh Rosen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can't make you laugh either. We uh, we got a jam packed show. It is Monday. We have some one liners from the Foot Clan provided via Twitter. Their reaction to the weekend, uh, it's Monday, pun day, so we got to get into these. Mark out Standrews. Oh, yeah. Yes, he is. My goodness. Highest target share among tight ends. He is a beast. It was it was ironic because I have Mark Andrews, Vance McDonald on my dynasty team. Last week it was Vance. It was not a good dance. This week I put Andrews in. I'm like, he's blowing him out, and then Vance comes back with two touchdowns. Did Vance outscore him? No. Okay. Nope. I say he had like a hundo and a touchdown. Oh, we've got DeAndre Flopkins. Oh, come oh, on. Yeah, boo. What? He's he's earned himself a week off. <laughs> come on. That guy sucks. <laughs> <laughs> Raheem must start. Yes. You, you know, he must. is he's great. Matt Breida is great. Raheem Mostert is great. This is true. They are both also Kyle Shanahan and, yes. and running backs. Yeah, That's my, a good situation. My name is Jeff. Had two touchdowns. Yeah, yeah. Latavius worry. Oh, yeah. I would be massively yeah, worried the, about the worry, Latavius. The worry level has to be going up. And Jared cooked as well. Jared cooked. Okay. Latavius worry. There are players, and we'll talk about the we'll talk about the Drew Brees situation and all the impacts. But those two players, bad news bears. Yes. For uh, Drew Brees' absence, the injury over the weekend, Marquez Valdez struggling. Well, what? Nah, that yeah, one's not I mean, very good. Valdez Cantling. Oh, that's way go. better. There yeah. 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 Uh, Dudu Westbrook. <sighs> it's my, so simple, but it works. My man. My man, Didi. Can't be sweet on Didi anymore. Well, they've, not without Nick Foles. Look, Gardner Minshew is like my favorite human being as of right now. <laughs> <laughs> He's overtaken Fitzpatrick. Dude, his swag level is off the charts. I don't know if you guys saw the report. He does all his pregame stretching in the locker room only in his jockstrap. Yes, I, I saw a teammate of his said, <laughs> I didn't even know guys still wore jockstraps. 
<laughs> let alone only a jock strap while he's working out. That that jock strap, that facial hair, that it's, chest hair. Oh man, he almost got it done. Um, well, they they took the ball out of his hands. Yeah, Danny Amon Donut. <laughs> <laughs> Fair. Uh, and then Terry McLovin. It. Mm. That's a good one. That is Terry McLaurin. Uh, probably a little overshadowed by Hollywood Brown's fast start, but McLovin two two great games to start his NFL career. Yeah. So we'll talk about that. We had a few water bets this weekend, and each one of us ended up winning one of them. John Ross versus McCole Hardman. Neither of us were unhappy with what happened, but you ended up winning that one, John Ross, over McCole Hardman, Mike, so you'll douse me in water. Yes. Jason, the uh, the Dolphins-Patriots <laughs> game was a tight one, but you ended up covering twice. Twice. So I'm taking I, – I volunteered oh. to take two waters – Oh, that's admirable. Because I was double wrong on that one. And then Eric Ebron, the uh, touchdown. He snuck in. Snuck into that top 12, so I end up watering Mike. So we put the week one payouts up on YouTube last week, the videos. You guys have been asking for us to pay the water bets out publicly. And so we did that. And you can go to YouTube.com slash the fantasy footballers to see those. Follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. And we appreciate everybody supporting the show over at jointhefoot.com. It's time for the Rewind. Weekly Rewind. If I take a big pause in between every word that I say, it lets me think of the next word I'm going to say. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, if I'm not it's, it's sure. really my strategy. Weekly Rewind brought to you by the Sleeper app. Here's the big one. Drew yeah. Brees slated to miss six weeks. That's not an exact science there. Torn thumb ligament going to need surgery. The estimate right now is six weeks. Could be more. Could be more. It is possible that they place him on IR. That would guarantee it that it is eight weeks. I doubt they do Whoa. that. Whoa. Sorry, we have breaking news oh, for the next blur we, for for the next one. All right. Well, uh, yeah, it, it's possible. I doubt they do that because two. If they could get those last two games and have them miss six weeks instead of eight weeks, that's two losses that could become wins potentially. Uh, so I I doubt they place them on IR, but that is in consideration right now. I and imagine it, that they'll give them the opportunity to recover faster and help their team. And you know, and so. As far as the rest of the players on the team. Huge downgrades. The way I I was driving in, and I'm thinking about it, Latavius Murray, Jared Cook, Out. I don't even yeah. care about you anymore. Agreed. Uh, Alan Kamara, Michael Thomas, I have at about 70% of what they were. That's sure, how I view but it. But that's still a huge it's downgrade. It's a monstrous hit. Like Alvin so, Kamara goes from a locked and loaded top three running back to, I mean, he's – I, like, I would have him now as a fringe RB1. Yeah, he's definitely a top 15 running back for sure because his talent yeah. is outrageous. But you look at the amount of touchdowns he's scored over the last few years, those opportunities are not going to be there without Drew Brees. And so uh, you, it's unfortunate when those things happen. I mean, the, the Saints plus rushing touchdowns. That's what you've come to know. And if this team is not as competitive offensively, those opportunities will go down for Alvin Kamara, for Michael Thomas. <clears throat> it's it's unfortunate. Well, this is where we had the breaking news. This is even bigger. Oh, Big Ben goodness. Roethlisberger with the right elbow injury in the first half of the game. The Steelers just announced that he had an MRI on the right elbow. He will need surgery this week. He is out for the season. Have we wow. vetted that source? Where did that come in from? Borland? Borland is gone. That's from Rap Sheet. Okay. That's from Rap Sheet. All right, Ian Rappaport reporting. Gone for the season. <clears throat> They're 0-2 oh. right now. James Conner also suffered a knee injury. Big Ben is out. Your Juju Smith-Schuster shares just went to... They uh, went way down. I mean, they, they went way down. They, yeah. did exactly, they did exactly what just happened to Michael Thomas. I think these two players take the biggest hits because they are wide receivers who rely on quarterbacks. And now their quarterbacks just got massively downgraded. I, look, I think Mason Rudolph is one of the better backups in the league. Teddy Bridgewater is probably one of the better backups in the league. But these guys are not going to be able to sustain top eight wide receiver 
performances. They're back for guys. a reason. This season's over, Pittsburgh. Oh yes, for sure. For more than Big Ben, that they're zero two. I guess I lose that water bet at the end of the season. Well, I I don't even like. They weren't playing well to begin with, but now you're in a situation where you have no chance to overcome. Likely, what uh, Baltimore looks great, and then Cleveland. We'll see what they have tonight. But this is um, this is pretty game breaking news for Drew Brees, Big Ben, both Hall of Fame quarterbacks, both guys that have top five, top ten wide receivers, depending on them. And these injuries are are very significant to their whole, the whole outlook fantasy wise yes. for both teams. I'll and, say this though for Pittsburgh, that we might have another. Peyton Manning, Indianapolis situation where the, the team was already struggling and and Big Ben was going to be the one who had to carry them across the line if they were going to make any kind of move. You're saying now, like, draft pick-wise? Like all of a sudden now the Steelers, they're going to, uh, at least from the team we've seen from two weeks, they're going to be one of the top picks in the draft and you just uh, and there's there's a couple good quarterbacks coming out. Well, Next Mason Rudolph, year. I mean, they like him, and he looked pretty good yesterday. He doesn't have the swag level of the secret garden. Well, now, no, because no one does. No man. Yeah, but he is also a better quarterback than the secret guard, uh, I believe. Look, James Conner, starting running back, also injured his knee. He's getting yep. tests today. So this is just... Well, Jalen Samuels could end up one of the bigger waiver wire oh, pickups he, yes. of the week, regardless of this quarterback situation if James Conner is out. And... Um, more injuries. Devin Singletary, hamstring injury. Uh, he was ruled out. Yeah, we'll, we'll see the severity of this. Jason and I were caught this one live. It was the old, I'm running at full speed to the edge, and then I start hopping about halfway through. And whenever you see a player do that, it's great concern for a multi-week absence with the hamstring. <laughs> and now you're, and then you're dealing with a recovering hamstring the entire year. Similar, he won't be as uh, hot – as a pickup as Jalen Samuels. But if Singletary is going to miss a few weeks, Frank Gore is infinite. He is all. He's going to get work. He's also going to be at home next week against Cincinnati. There is a very high probability. Frank Gore. He, here's his stat line. Buffalo, New England are 3-0 and <laughs> facing off in week four. Here's his stat line next week. 32 carries, 80 yards, two touchdowns. 32 carries. Yeah, I'm just saying he's going to get massive work, be inefficient, score, and be fine for fantasy. Damian Williams ex exited the game with a right knee contusion. LaShawn McCoy dealing with an ankle injury. He's going to get an MRI on it. <clears throat> Goodness. I bet Pat Mahomes will be okay. Yes. <laughs> Pat, Pat Mahomes. No, you gotta you got to pay attention. Uh. Tomorrow's the waiver show, so we'll have more injury information about both Damian Williams and LaShawn McCoy, which can inform your Darwin Thompson Daryl Williams uh, pickups off of the waiver wire. You saw Darwin in there late after McCoy exited. So we'll see what happens there. Uh, this is, we say you don't win the league at your draft, and that's because every week on Monday we have to talk through about eight scenarios due to injury. That's why depth is so important. You set the table for your team, but you've got to pivot now. You've got to make adjustments. If you started Alshon Jeffrey or Deshaun Jackson last night, that was the scenario where if your opponent had them, you had a um, mysterious dream, like if they could only get hurt really right. early and then come out and score zero points. And then Deshaun Jackson owners, after they finally moved him into their lineup, had to suffer with that. What happened to the Eagles last night was outrageous because they lost the two starting wide receivers. Dallas Goddard went down. Nelson Aguilar was in and out of the game. Carson Wentz was in and out of the game. I mean, they, they were just getting the crap beat out of them in that game. But it's, and it is moving forward for Carson Wentz, I mean, we got to see the severity of these two wide receivers. I, I So I pulled Twitter up because I don't want to miss anything, right? Mason Rudolph, it's his time. A lot of right. buzz around Big Ben. I scroll down three. <clears throat> It's a video from Tom Brady with a big W and his chiseled <laughs> smile that has a little extra curl to it that I'm pretty sure has to do with uh, Big Ben being out and his path to the to the Super Bowl even cleaner. Uh, it all things go well for the future 18 yep. and 0 New England Patriots. All right, Michael Gallup has to have an MRI on his knee. 
supposed to be precautionary. We'll monitor it. And Sam Darnold, this was reported by Jay Glazer, those Yo, of you trying to Darnold. figure out what's wrong with Darnold Schwarzenegger. Hasn't lost a lot of weight. They're hopeful he can make a return potentially after the week four bye. You got to protect my spleen. Yes. My yes. spleen is, is so swollen. It's the spleen you got to watch out for, Jason. Because I give all the mm. smooches. Mwah, 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 mwah. Yes. Thank you, Mike. Get to the hospital. And thank you, everyone who's still listening <laughs> after this segment. Um, Kenyon Drake on the trade block. That was some other non-injury That's news. That's great news. For people who have Kenyon Drake on their team. Can we trade uh, Kalen Balaj's hands for oh my goodness. something else? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Not looking good. Uh, weekly Rewind and News brought to you by the Sleeper app. Don't miss a single piece of fantasy football news, notes, information. We're going to get into the stud muffins. Before we do, I want to thank Harry's for supporting hey. today's show. Listen to this, Mike. Humans. Listening. Humans have Humans. been shaving for over 5,000 years. They have. And you know what? The ancient Greeks, they didn't need flex balls, heated handles, and neither do you, Mike. Okay? <laughs> Call no, some people out. No, no gimmicky features to the razors, just the highest quality razor and shave possible. They never upcharge you. You get durable quality blades at a fair price, just two bucks a blade. And they cut that middleman out. You guys know about Harry's. They've been supporting the show for a long time. I've been using them for a long, long time time and you know what if you don't love the shave you get a free refund uh you they'll give you a full refund so you gotta That's check nice them out of them. join the 10 million who have tried harry's claim the special trial offer by going to harry's.com slash footballer and you'll get a weighted ergonomic handle with a firm grip five blade razor with lubricating strip and trimmer blade a rich lathering shave gel with aloe to keep your skin hydrated and a travel blade cover to help keep your razor dry and easy on the go. Go to harrys.com slash footballer to start shaving better today. We'd like to thank Lightstream for sponsoring today's show. It's a fact. Refinancing your credit card balances can lower your interest rate and save you money. You don't have to be a financial expert. Right now, you can get a credit card consolidation loan from our friends at Lightstream with a rate as low as 5.95 APR with auto pay. That's way lower than the average credit card interest rate of over 19%. You got to get your finances in line. You can save thousands of dollars in interest, get a loan from $5,000 to $100,000. There are absolutely no fees, no application fees, no origination fees, no transaction fees, no prepayment penalties. Get that crap out of here with Lightstream. And the online application is so easy, you can apply right from your phone Lightstream believes that people with good credit deserve a better loan experience. The only way to get this discount is to go to lightstream.com slash footballers. Subject to credit approval. Rate includes a 0.5% auto pay discount. Terms and conditions apply and offers are subject to change without notice. Visit lightstream.com slash footballers for more information. That's L-I-G-H-T-S-T-R-E-A-M dot com slash footballers. <laughs> This week's Fantasy Stud Muffins. Patrick Mahomes, 30 for 44, 443 and 4. Ba it basically uh, all came in the second quarter. Uh, pretty good player. Yeah, 443. That's a ridiculous yardage total. And you may need to lean on him more if you have injuries to those running backs. Uh, he might throw 50 touchdowns again. He might. And you know what the impressive thing is, is if you watch those plays that he made, the th he had a point in this game where he had six consecutive throws, six consecutive completions of over 25 yards. He had five straight of over 35 yards. And we're not talking about like, hey, when he tried to throw it 35 yards, he completed it and they were in a row. We're talking like consecutive pass attempts where he threw the ball 35 plus yards and then did it again and again and again. And again and again. And you again and again. And here's the thing. Watch those plays. What do you notice? You notice Patrick Mahomes gets to sit back in yeah. the pocket. The offensive line is buying him time. He just moves a little bit to the left, a little bit to the right, and then he can throw it up to McCole Hardman or Demarcus Robinson or Sammy Watkins or Travis Kelsey or Damian my, Williams my or Tyreek Hill when he comes back. Just like hypothetically. I know, I know that Hill is an excellent wide receiver on the field. He can change some things. But when you're a, a football team that has to – pay certain positions, and like the Chiefs' defense is – that will be the weak point moving forward as they try to make a Super Bowl run. 
Do they watch Demarcus Robinson ball out last night and go, did we really need to give Hill all that money? It did cross my mind. I had tweeted during the game, Demarcus Robinson is either the greatest player in NFL history or Patrick Mahomes is incredible. And, and then, the thing is, and then you have he made great Hardman plays. did as well. Yeah, like, and McCall Hardman had a 72-yarder called back on a, uh, a holding penalty that really didn't even affect the play. This team needs to figure their defense out. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Once again, because when they turn it on on offense – you're just seeing a new NFL right now with Patrick Mahomes. Lamar Jackson, let's turn that to fantasy for a second. Let me stay on Mahomes. You you kind of tongue-in-cheek, kind of reality, Patrick Mahomes could throw 50 again. I think we agree he could do it. It's probably going to happen. So let's pretend it is. What do you do? What, do you, do you, what, what are we do talking, you, next year or this year? No, this year. What do you do? You, most listeners probably drafted late quarterbacks, hopefully Lamar Jackson, 24 for 47, or 37, 272 and 2, and 120 on the ground, which broke a career high for him. But if you don't have Lamar Jackson and you're looking at Patrick Mahomes, what's the fair trade value for Patrick Mahomes? Wow. Let's say you want to buy into that and you want to go get him. I don't think you're going to be able to get him. Yeah. The person who drafted him drafted him high. They believe in having the best quarterback – they have the best quarterback. The only way you're going to get him is by giving three or four quality players for him, and I I probably wouldn't do that because you're going to end up wrecking the depth on your team. Do you believe that you can get Patrick Mahomes at at a at a fair value, Andy? Nope. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> when I when when you said what do you do, my thought was I start all of my Kansas City options because look. It didn't work out for Sammy Watkins this week, right? People were disappointed in the Lizard King. Yeah, he had only 49 yards receiving, I think. Yeah. No I mean, touchdowns. He, he, he didn't goose, but, you know, but it wasn't his fault. It was like the, the offense didn't – he can't do anything after a 70-yard touchdown to someone else. He doesn't get to play football anymore, that drive. It just didn't go his way. But you want those – They took shots at him, too. Yeah, you want those players in your lineup. You want the option to – okay, maybe he finishes with 49 yards. Or 250. Yeah, yeah, and, and I don't think any of us expected, maybe some of you did, but I I don't think even these two Lizard King supporters uh, expected him to go out for 198 again. I mean, it's not going to no. – you can't do that every week. What I did – really didn't expect was Demarcus Robinson to go out and just light the world on fire. So would you trade – would you shoot for Patrick Mahomes with Lamar Jackson? Let's say you're rostering Lamar Jackson – and you can put Lamar Jackson and a piece together to go get oh, Patrick Mahomes. Certainly. Wouldn't, yeah, that be, would, wouldn't that be the situation? Yes, I would do that. Yeah, I mean, Lamar Jackson, he's been great. He's going to be great because he's got the baseline of rushing. But he also faced Miami and Arizona for the first two weeks. Well, he faces Kansas City this week in Kansas City. You get the Mahomes versus Lamar Jackson adventure. Cannot wait for that. Dak Prescott, start of the week. Tom Brady, start of the week. And Russell Wilson also had very solid weeks. Jimmy Garoppolo, people want to know. Do I pivot from Cam Newton to Jimmy Garoppolo after a 17-for-25 performance, 300 yards, three touchdowns? I don't mind it. Seems interesting, doesn't it? Yeah. He assuming, doesn't even need Dante Pettis. Assuming that Josh Allen is not on your waiver wire, I mean, like Andy Dalton is very interesting, Jimmy Garoppolo, for those with the, the heartbreak that has been Cam Newton. Through two games, Dak Prescott's completing 82% of his passes. Not bad. He looks great. Not bad. Um, running backs, Dalvin Cook, have another game. Yeah. 20 for 154 and 1, 3 for 37 through the air. Has Oakland, then Chicago, New York. He's the league's leading rusher at 265 rushing yards. So through two weeks, my uh, article's right. Can, I <laughs> can we just declare it over at this point? As long as we can declare my, my bold prediction. Yeah, I was going to ask Andy real Done. quick. Uh, who is, through two weeks, Obviously, Monday Night Football left to go. The running back won. The best running back in fantasy after two weeks. Is it Dalvin Cook? It is not. He is number two. Okay. It is Austin Eckler. Oh, nice. Yes. Yeah. Let's go. Yeah, he uh, was 17 for 66 in a touchdown this week. Had an, a goal line fumble. Had a, had a touchdown called back and then had a goal line fumble, and he's still the number yeah. one guy. Justin Jackson had a long touchdown called back he as did. well. He looks great to me. I mean, Jackson's a good Eckler, player. Eckler looks amazing. It's like not, it, separate conversation. Sure. But Justin Jackson looked great to me too. 
Aaron jo- did you see uh, Melvin Gordon retweeted um, some people this weekend? Uh-oh. Somebody tweeted. Like, is he getting salty? No, not at all. Oh, okay. He's almost more the opposite. Oh, good. So- somebody, good for you, Melvin. Somebody tweeted, um, hey, and then tagged him. Hey, Melvin Gordon, Austin Eckler is better than you. And he just retweeted it. <laughs> That's all he did. <laughs> That's funny. Aaron right, but, Jones. But, but your point, I mean, tomorrow's the waiver show, but like Justin Jackson is such a high value handcuff. If Austin Eckler misses time, which he's been known to do that as well, Justin Jackson will ball out. He will be a game changing or a team changing acquisition. Aaron Jones. You finally got to see kind of a heavy workload for him. Twenty three carries. Jamal Williams only had, I think, eight. And he went for one sixteen and one. Caught four passes. It was nice to see a big game for Aaron Jones. Yeah. yeah, the six targets is is the real important thing. His utilization there and the split with Jamal Williams. He looked like he's become the guy we wanted him to be when we drafted him. Looks good going forward. Now, you would think Raheem Mostert's 13 for 83 would be a decent yards per carry. And then Matt Breida put up 12 for 121. And then poor Jeff Wilson, he didn't have the efficiency, just two touchdowns. Mm-hmm. Well, to be fair to Jeff Wilson, it was 10. He only had 34 yards, but two of those carries were short yardage situations. Well, to be fair he to got Ra- all the yards he could possibly get. To be fair to Raheem Mostart, uh, he had 68 yards on only three receptions. That's true. I mean, this, this oh, backfield man. was just so you feasting. S- you start Breida, then Mostert, then Wilson? Is that how you would be yeah, yeah. treating it? Yep. Poor poor Breeder didn't get in the end zone. Yeah, he's all right. He looked great. Saquon, big game. We can probably move on. Wide receivers. Demarcus Robinson, you mentioned it. Here's the one that needs to be brought up because he sat on my bench for two weeks because I couldn't believe it. I just needed to see it, and now I see it, and I do believe it. Emmanuel Sanders, 11 yep. for 98, another touchdown, 13 targets through two weeks off the – Achilles injury looks impossible. absolutely outstanding. He's talked. Now, we have our eyeballs, right? And we know what this offense is with Joe Flacco. But Emmanuel Sanders, the way he talks about Joe Flacco, the rapport that they have, you're starting to see it on the field. And Sanders was absolutely great. These was, targets should be assured. That was against the Bears. I mean, that was not like <laughs> – That's a great that, that wasn't like, oh, he had a good game. It's just one of the most difficult, if not the most difficult defense to do this against – and he balled out 13 targets. He is locked and loaded, I think, as a top 15 Whoa, wide receiver the rest 15. of the way. Until injuries happen to either him or Flacco. That's a that's a high. I'll go top 20. Yeah. Well, but, like, he's, he's a must start. He's, couple tough matchups coming up. Has to go into Green Bay, then Jacksonville. Also, yeah. by the way, it, after DeMarcus Robinson, he had his, his big day. If you're in a dynasty league, you should probably check your waiver wire. Uh, Julio Jones, two more touchdowns for Julio. Chris Godwin, we knew about that big week. Galladay showed out. Eight for 117 and one. John Ross, <laughs> four for 112 and one on eight targets. Currently leads the NFL in receiving yards. I don't think you could have had a better start to the season possible for Mark Andrews. And then John Ross has this start to the season, Jason. It's- we cha- We traded them. One for one in like February. Yeah, it's so funny that I I traded you Mark Andrews for John Ross in our dynasty league. Regretted it most of the off season. Mark Andrews looks like a beast, but John Ross looks like a beast. Although context matters in fantasy. <laughs> yes, it does. You need to know how John Ross got a lot of these points. Mike, why don't you fill in so, the gap? So John Ross was about three for forty nine or so. It, with 50 seconds left in the football game and, and their score, blowout loss, I uh, it was at this point was 41 to 10. I think so, if I recall correctly. And then, and uh, then Dalton hit John Ross for one of those crossing routes, and John Ross took his 60 yards to the house. And I get watered because of it. That it, is correct. You get watered because of the combination of that and the the McCole Hardman long bomb touchdown that yep. would have beat that but was called back on a hole. Yeah, it feels great. Tyler Boyd, 10 for 122 on 10 targets. These two guys until A.J. Green comes back. I mean, Boyd, regardless. Boyd is safe. Boyd is safe. John yes. Ross, the only the only kind of wrinkle in this breakout campaign is the return of, I would say it's two things. I would say it's the return of A.J. Green 
and then hopefully the health of, of Joe Mixon improving after barely playing in this game. But so far, so good for John Ross. Are you kind of starting him until AJ's back oh, on the yes. field? Yeah. Yep. All right. And then in the absence of Jeffrey and Deshaun Jackson, Nelson Aguilar, 8 4, 107 and 1. Yeah, he's going to be the, the hot wide receiver pickup. If, depending, on the, depending on the news for D. Jackson, Alshon. Sure. That's fair. Calvin Ridley, 8 for 105 and 1. He just looks great. I and mean, almost, you can start he, Julio and Ridley every week. Every yes. single week. Yep. And then uh, McCall Hardman, we mentioned it. Debo Samuel, 5 for 87 and 1. I think Debo is going to be one of the bigger waiver wire uh, options for people this week. They're involving him in the offense. Dante Pettis is uninvolved in this offense. The only other, the big question to me is let's say you're looking at what Jimmy Garoppolo did. You're a fantasy owner. You're trying to, you know, we, we said last week, right now it's like George Kittle and. You don't really know who else you can start. I will say this. Marquise Goodwin is the one assured of 100% of snaps on the outside of every game. He had three for 77 on a broken coverage, scored a touchdown. Debo or Marquise Goodwin is a waiver wire pickup this Man, week. I would I still, lean Debo. I myself. would go Debo. You're talking about the difference in targets, right? Debo, right. seven targets. Uh, Marquise Goodwin, three targets. Caught all of them, was efficient, is fast, can always break a big play. And last week, Marquise Goodwin had – three targets as yeah. well. He only caught one of them for seven yards, so I'm going to go with the the volume in that offense. Yeah, and this is an offense that's going to get pieces back. I mean, Trent Taylor's going to come back soon, and then Jalen Hurd eventually will be active, so it looks okay to pick one of these guys up. It might be more of a mirage, though, week to week. It could. On which guy to start, because you couldn't have <laughs> predicted it so far, which guy you would have wanted to, to throw out there. Let's go to the tight end position. Travis Kelsey, Mark Andrews. And oh my goodness. <laughs> People want it. Oh yes. I can't oh stop it. Oh my goodness. He's back. Will Disley, five for fifty. Two touchdowns, five targets. Yeehaw, friends. Big Montana doing big work. My voice is made for this moment. Five Yeehaw. for fifty and two. Will, how did that game feel? It felt so good to be out there. Just <laughs> Why are we assuming it? he sounds like that? Because this is what my voice can do right now. How else Mike? does Big Montana sound, Mike? <laughs> like, no, amazing game by Will Disley and another amazing recovery. He had a very serious injury yes. um, and has recovered to be heavily involved. Two touchdowns. He's going to be a touchdown dependent tight end, I think, moving forward. Would you rather have Will Disley or Eric Ebron moving forward? Ooh, uh, That's a great question. I think I would rather have Will Disley. I think I would go Disley. That's but, crazy. But they're, they're, they're very similar tiered players for me. Vance McDonald, 7 for 38, two touchdowns on seven targets. Um, I guess this will be like maybe, oh! the, maybe the last time you get a hit at. Who knows? Actually, we'll, see, we'll see if Mason leans on him. I was, that's what I was going to bring up. Uh, the touchdowns were from Mason Rudolph. Mason seemed to be looking his way. I think he's a guy that – is really interesting going forward. That's not to say he's got a higher ceiling without Big Ben, but I, I think that Vance is very interesting. I'd be looking to to hold him, to and Mr. find him. Whatever Pitterson. you do, don't throw to Dante Moncrief. It is so Ever. important. Oh, he got it's, benched. It's so important as a person, just for your own psyche, not to throw the ball to him. I think that that transition has – happened no it'll it'll be James Washington well, not, moving forward not only that but keep in mind James Washington I mean James Washington is a Mason Rudolph favorite they went sure. to college together if you look at the preseason from the from these yeah, last two yep, years you're right Mason Rudolph has dominated preseason or uh, excuse me James Washington has dominated preseason That's like point. you've never seen before Mike you've talked about in years past and you've been correct that when the backup quarterback comes in, oftentimes it's more of the backup wide receiver that he's practicing with day in, day out. I expect Mason uh, James Washington to be decently relevant. All right. Uh, I think Greg Olson, by the way, don't forget about that Thursday night game, six for 110. Yeah. Waiver show tomorrow. We'll bring up some names. And uh, <laughs> Greg Olson <laughs> gets to play Arizona. That's not you know, fair. I'll say this. I mean, Arizona's defense, they were in that game. It was sure. a 23 to, 23 to uh, 17 ball game. They were put in this position where I was so frustrated 
because they couldn't contain Lamar Jackson. Then I remembered it's Lamar Jackson. Like, they're not used to facing that, but they had a pretty darn good game considering uh, what we had seen Miami do the week before. Sure. My, my point was – But, the, Mark Andrews, give the, me a break. The tight end position. <clears throat> Hockley's – well, sort of. Who, who Like, TJ Hawkinson week one balled out against – the Cardinals. Mark Andrews balled out against the Cardinals. It was Cardinals. super annoying to watch Mark Andrews be open for every first down all mm -hmm. game long. So you're right. And so we'll see what happens next week with him. And time to move on. Stinkers of the Week. Presented by Odor Eaters. All right. These guys stunk it up. Yeah. <clears throat> Tilt check. <laughs> yeah, seriously. <laughs> you know, it's easy week one to overreact. You get into week two. It seems like the same amount of overreaction is happening to some of these performances. Fantasy football is a very subjective game. You don't have control over so many factors, whether it would be those illustrated by injury this week with major players going down and impacting those performances or just the ebbs and flows of the game, the way Sammy Watkins was a beast last week couple bombs don't go his way this week. Does that make Sammy Watkins a worse player? No. Not really. It's just the way that it goes. And if you – one of the things that we've put a lot of time and effort into that's part of being a member of Join the Foot but is also in the UEK is the consistency charts. And Jason works to build these things out each and every year where you can glance at one screen and see each and every week's performances and whether they finish in the top five or the top 12 or, or outside of that range – you're not going to find very many players. You're talking a handful at each position that really provide consistency on a week-to-week -week basis. So you're playing probability in your start and sits, and you're going to have ebbs and flows, and you need to kind of relax and realize that guys are going to have – look at Christian McCaffrey. He's not any worse of a player this week than he was last week, but the best illustration of consistency is a 40-point week and a 6-point week from Christian McCaffrey. As, uh, as a famous book Brooks brought up, uh, once said, what is the, what's the phrase, Brooks? Everybody poops. Everybody mm. poops. Sometimes. What? Sometimes. <laughs> a great <laughs> novel. Everybody it's a great song. hurts. All right, quarterback poopers. These guys stunk it up. These are the stinkers of the week at the quarterback position. We already saw Cam Newton. But Deshaun Watson, 16 for 29, no passing touchdowns. Yeah. Kind of salvaged an absolute ca catastrophic week with a rushing touchdown, but had 159 passing yards. This Jacksonville is how good Pat Mahomes is because Jacksonville's a great defense. Like, Jacksonville shut him down. This was not just that, you know, Deshaun Watson isn't good or DeAndre Hopkins isn't good. This was a tough matchup. We didn't want to believe that Jacksonville was as good as they were because of what Pat Mahomes did to Jacksonville week one. I, I think Jacksonville is a dominant defense that – will still get torched by Pat Mahomes. I I'll, I think that they're a, a really, really good defense, and but they have the ability to avalanche on themselves. Sure. I think that's what we saw last year too. Like Statistically, at the end of the year, they were a good defense last year. But then they had these like handful of games where the, the wheels fell off, they're yelling at each other. Their players getting thrown out. Yeah, and so I think you know this was a good game for them, and they almost won it on the back of that defense. So – Deshaun Watson's still running for his life. Laramie Tunzel has an ankle problem. He says he's fine, but he has been not good enough. But we're not scared. Like No, not for Watson. Cam, I'm, uh, you, yeah, you got you to move on right now yeah. until he proves it. Deshaun Watson, he's like a go trade for him off of this performance. Derek Carr did not show out. 23 no. for 38, 198 and 1, had two ugly picks. And what, what's Sometimes wild. Sometimes they can be so ugly they should count as two interceptions. What's wild is the Raiders were winning this game 10 to 0 and then in position to like put even more points on the board. Like Carr was playing well yes. to start the game and then everything just turned into a black hole and imploded on itself. Yeah. I guess because they, they have the black hole. They there. do have it. 28 points in the second quarter put them into a position that Derek Carr is entirely uncomfortable, which is he can't come back. He just can't do it. He cannot throw the ball downfield. This was a game where, you know, I think that's the problem. That's the thing that's going to get John Gruden pulling his hair out is it's underneath to Renfro, underneath to Tyrell, to underneath to Waller a lot. 
and he needs to feed him a bit more. Uh, what do you what do you think of the what happened with Josh Jacobs, where he was seeding a bunch of snaps to Jalen Richard? So it was like you didn't get the full workhorse role that you we thought we had from Josh Jacobs after Week One. I think it just has to do with the game script and putting Richard out there on third down pass protection situations. I'm saying, does that does that concern you about Josh Jacobs moving forward, knowing that this this is what's going to happen? If the Raiders go down, then Jacobs will be coming off the field more and more. Yeah, he had 12 carries in this game, still had 99 yards rushing. Yeah, that big like 51 yarder looked great on that. Yeah, run. I I don't think it changes anything in a very pragmatic, tangible way. There's nothing I'm going to do different. I'm not going to sit him because game script's going to hurt the Raiders from time to time. They have Minnesota, Indianapolis next, both games on the road. Uh, they're not facing Mahomes again this week, <laughs> so I don't think that they played that bad as a team. I think they just got boat raced in the second quarter and couldn't overcome it. Even when it was 28-10, to 10, they were down on the goal line. He threw that ugly pick. It would have been a second touchdown for Tyrell Williams in this game, who seems very stable as the one in that offense. Sure. So, Let's talk about my favorite stinker. Oh, gosh. Who's your favorite stinker? My favorite stinker at quarterback was able to come up with a solid 120 passing yards. Mitchell Trubisky. Oh. You're talking about the game-winning drive? talking about you stink. Uh, yes. Because <laughs> he, he did lead them on a game-winning drive. He did throw one pass that was caught that <laughs> was constitutes there was a, a game-winning This was a hard drive. game to watch on both sides of the football. There's a reason he had to have a game-winning So let's w let's weigh in because we want to – you know, make one side of the fan base feel bad. But I don't think they should have been granted that timeout. I don't think that that was a fair play on the on – Oh, the when, with the one second left? You guys saw the end of that mm -hmm. game. I, I think – I don't think it was – I don't think they should have done that. seemed like they I ran out the, of time. It seemed like they ran out of time to me too. But uh, To me, if you're down with one second and you're calling timeout immediately, I don't know. That's uh, yeah, It was really tight. Phillip Rivers, Kirk Cousins, also terrible games. Kirk Cousins is not this, startable this right is now. not good. Not good for Kirk Cousins in Minnesota. Yeah, and Rivers, uh, you know, Philip Rivers. <laughs> sometimes he performs, sometimes he doesn't. Sometimes they lean on the running game, sometimes he throws interceptions. He's a middling streaming option. Yes. Running back, stinkers mm, of the week. Mm, this one's unfortunate. Get your odors, get your odor eaters <laughs> out. Yes. Alvin Kamara, 13 for 45. Has only he ever been in this list? Probably not. Like, I mean, maybe once. The thing that's going to hurt a lot is, I mean, a lot's a lot's going to hurt. I mean, no Drew Brees, it changed your whole offense. But the reliance, the chemistry on the receiving end for Alvin Kamara with Drew Brees, I'm very concerned about this. He only had three targets in this game, Ooh, that's one not... reception. It's gross. We said throw Latavius Murray out. He had five carries and one catch. You know, not good. But Alvin Kamara, what are you going to do? You're going to play Alvin Kamara. Yes. He's too good. Christian McCaffrey, you're going to play him. It doesn't matter if he's stunk. Now, Joe Mixon, he fought through an injury to get into this game. Pretty much put up a, a stat line as though he hadn't played. I mean, 11 for 17, 3 for 10 through the air. Gio just had six rushes. It was pretty gross overall. They have Buffalo next week. That is not a good matchup for them on the road. You're still going to play him. Right, you, I mean, I I, I I was benching Mixon well, this week. Let's, yes, this let's week think makes about, sense. This week he was coming off the ankle. You don't know how much he's actually going to be used. That uh, totally makes sense to bench him this week. But next week, another week removed from the ankle, he is still the starting, you know, workhorse running back for this team. Presumably, his ankle is completely fine by then. Bad matchup. I wouldn't play him. Really? If I had options. I mean, that's what it well, comes down sure. to. But options being like this. Let me let me illustrate it. If I'm sitting there going, do I throw Miles Sanders out there in week three or do I throw David Montgomery out there in week three? Those are the kind of players you would have gotten late that maybe you have the option of pitting, uh, uh, of, right. of putting Mixon on the bench for. It's a tough matchup. I don't know if the upside's really there against Buffalo. If he practices all week, maybe that opinion changes. But, I, you know, Mike, would you be playing Mixon over both of those no, players? No, I... I I side with you that I want to see Joe Mixon be healthy and I want to see him be active in this offense as well. Just a, a funny side tangent through two weeks. Andy Dalton is averaging nearly 47 attempts a game. 
if you if you want to continue that through the whole season, that would be 744 attempts. Can you get the Kyler Murray pace for <laughs> I can, me? Because sure. I know he's on pace for more. Yeah, it's, he's on it's pace just to funny. break the record. It's just funny to see Andy Dalton. Like this is such a different offense, man. Why? Well, and they're put, being put in a position. I mean, forty-three points they gave up to to Jimmy Garoppolo. If you're if you go down, if that if this defense is looking like it is right now. You're going to be in this situation for Andy Dalton every week. And the difference is, is Zach Taylor feels confident enough in his offensive scheme and the players around Dalton to say, we're going to try to come back in this game with right. your arm as opposed to on the ground. So Andy Dalton is 46 and a half attempts per game. Kyler Murray is a full 47. So, yeah, a lot of passing attempts there. Tariq Cohen, what do you do with him? Four for 18 on the ground, two for seven through the air. Well, it was an ugly offensive performance when your quarterback throws 120 total passing yards. I was going to say four, he is he is basically more of a wide receiver than a running back right now, and his quarterback is Trubisky. So yeah, you you don't want to start him if you can look elsewhere. Please do. To weigh in there for a second on something important, I mean David Montgomery got a lot more work this week yes. compared to Mike Davis. Mike Davis was an afterthought in this game. Yeah, they well yeah he 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 was a touch afterthought he was not a snap afterthought when you see them around the goal line and they're sitting there with Mitch Trubisky on the three and Mike Davis comes in for third sure, down that's annoying. that just makes you frustrated but it's nice to see the transition start to happen right yeah, yeah I mean I'm, I'm playing Montgomery next week snap snap wise not necessarily carry but snap what you're speaking to he was 56 percent of snaps in week one and he was down to 24 wonderful yeah. In, in week Wonderful. two. So 18 it, this is carries the, for David Montgomery, three targets. Yeah, he finally like, got the opportunity. I will say this. He hasn't taken advantage of the opportunity yet. Two games in each game under four a carry in both of them. So And it took him like six goal line opportunities <laughs> to get that <laughs> touchdown. I mean, yeah. he, he failed, failed, failed. Penalty, failed, failed, got in. But I'm playing I would, him. I would be – yeah, I'll play him next week too. But I would be trying to, you know, if I'm playing the Bears – I'm stopping the running game, and I'm putting it all on Mitch Trubisky sure. each and every week if I want to beat them, so that can make it challenging. Um, okay, and so Duke Johnson didn't do anything in this game. I feel like Fantasy he, owners scrambling to wonder, can you play him? Yeah, bringing up Duke Johnson, I think you you have to bring up the the his counterpart, which is Carlos Hyde, who had 20 attempts, 20 carries for 90 yards on the ground. I mean – like Carlos Hyde has looked great. It was still Duke Johnson as the primary guy in week one, but you saw a huge swing to Carlos Hyde. So how are you approaching both these players? Are you to the point where you'll say, okay, I'll play Carlos Hyde against the Chargers, or are you going to bench both of them? I'm I, I'm somewhat willing to sniff Carlos Hyde, but I would still rather. you <laughs> <laughs> In the stinkers of the week segment, you're going to sniff Carlos Hyde? You know, I would rather not. The, the matchup against the Chargers isn't that bad. It's but, not a good smell if you do that. But Duke historically, Johnson, uh, Duke Johnson, is, I, I'm not going to touch him. I, it's funny. I, said, I would play Duke in that matchup over Carlos Hyde. Oh, dude, you can't play Duke. He's, he's a pass-catching running back that's playing for a team that doesn't throw the ball to the running backs. He had one target, and he, he scares me. I wouldn't touch Duke. Okay. We maybe by midweek we'll have a Carlos Hyde versus Duke water bet, the kind that we'll tell our kids about. Yes. <laughs> All right, Devonta Freeman, eleven for twenty-two. It's been pretty ugly for Devonta Freeman so far. Chris Carson, fifteen for sixty, which is fine. Three for twenty-seven through the air is whatever. But he fumbled twice, and this is the concern that you know is he going to be? These were very costly fumbles from Chris Carson. Both of them were, especially the last one, and. Do they start to just force the ball into Rashad uh, Penny's hands? And Penny had a a good game, they had a breakaway touchdown. I you know, it's it's too early to tell. I would say that the loyalty factor that That's you usually would lean, see yeah. from Pete Carroll, he's loyal to his guys. So I don't expect them to punish Chris Carson. How long of a run? There was a thirty-seven yard run, right? For the uh, Penny touchdown. The Penny touchdown. Off the top of my head, I do not know. So outside of that, he was 9 for 25. So that's not a good game. 2.7 a carry in terms of production. So I would tend to lean on the, after breaking that down, lean on the side of Carson is just a better runner. But if he fumbles, here's here's the risk. If he fumbles in the middle of a game, 
you could see the pine for a while yeah. with Chris Carson because they take Mike's favorite approach of, <laughs> of yeah. hey, let's punish the whole team for your mistake, Chris. The, the running back is such a strange position because they get – they get pulled off, you know, like they get punished for things like a fumble. They get swapped in and out with other running backs and like cuz you made a mistake. Oh, you you missed this blitz pickup, like which you don't want your your team making mistakes. But the running back position is treated unlike a, like a wide receiver. A wide receiver goes out. If you had out, a drop, goes out, he drops the ball, you're like, "Okay, we'll throw it to you the next play." A wide receiver goes out, has a bad drop, tips the ball into the air. And it gets picked off. Generally speaking, they're not going to do anything to that wide receiver. Except receiver, for when Moncrief did it I this said, week. Generally speaking, generally speaking, wide receiver whiffs on blocking a running right. play. They're still on the He's field. Like, well, the same we'll get him next time. But the running back, like, well, we're not going to pay you, and we're going to send you to the bench for screwing up. How scared are you guys about Devonta Freeman? Are you with me yet? Uh, eleven for twenty-two on the ground. Sure. It. it Watch I'm it. no mathematician. No, I I understand the production was bad. Three for three for forty two is better. If they aren't going to utilize him in the passing game more, then then I will be worried. Watching Cer him certainly play, doesn't feel like a running back one moving no, forward. He's no. got to be in the two three category yeah, of adjusting expectations. But watching him play once he's finally in space, he still look to me looks like Devonta Freeman. Looks but a little you, bigger, but you can't run. In, in between the tackles with that offensive line, at least not right now. 62% um, snaps yeah, that went for Freeman, 38% for Ito. Yeah, it was 50-50 week one. Um, also, Phillip Lindsay, 13 for 36. There's a real problem here with Phillip Lindsay, Royce Freeman's situation on a Royce bad, Freeman on a bad was, offense. was better. Royce Freeman out-snapped him, and Royce Freeman had – over 100 yards from scrimmage. Seven targets yeah. for oh, Royce man. Freeman. Yep. He's good, Mike. Uh, yeah, like Jason spent the whole entire Sunday bemoaning the fact that he had Royce Freeman no, on he's, his he's on his redraft he's team. A, he's like, Royce, please do something so I can trade you. But I think you you should trade for him, Mike. No, I'm not going to trade for him. Mm. But after like at the end of next week, you might be real happy that Royce Freeman's on your team. I don't think you're going to be happy with either player. I agree because I, you have two players that are worthy of being getting number one running back snaps and they're on the same team and this offense is atrocious right now that's the problem to me i i mean i feel like i would are you ever going to be in a position where you feel confident starting him this year and i think the answer is no no i mean when you get to bye I'll weeks maybe when you get to bye weeks and injuries happen yeah, that's sure, why like sure. i can't drop him even though i feel like he's a roster clog i wish i could trade him for like a crisp pickle or something that i could get use out of <laughs> I heard you use. I heard the name Chris Pickle, so as in nice. the the man Chris Pickle is this superstar NFL player that I've never heard. <laughs> yeah, of. Christopher Pickle, Christopher you Pickle. who's by the way Stash friends him. with Byron Pringle, of course, because that's course. the name that popped into my head. I Stash going, Chris Pickle. Uh, yeah, he's good with week Darryl. eight. Daryl Anderson, Darnell, Darnell. Sorry. All right, running back stinkers. Sorry, wide receiver stinkers. DeAndre Hopkins, Robert Woods. Any mm. concerns with those two long term? Robert, Robert Woods Wood, just two for thirty three. Robert Woods had two really good plays called back on yeah. penalty. One of which was a touchdown. He got so we were like, yes, he had a great week, and then it was like, oh, it didn't exist. So I'm not concerned with Woods. He he was two calls away from a great game. If you're concerned with Hopkins, you should quit fantasy. Yep. Yes. Uh, Mike Evans, Allen Robinson, Julian Edelman, Josh Gordon. I don't feel like Mike Evans belongs here. Four for 61 on eight targets. It, you're disappointed. Yeah, that's true, Brooks. Get him out of here. <laughs> but I don't feel Get like Get him out of stink. here. <laughs> okay. And then uh, Edelman and Gordon. Now, I I had kind of made up my mind heading into the weekend on Saturday as I'm thinking about this. It, will A.B. play? Will he not play? I just decided on Saturday that I said, on my teams, I'm benching Josh Gordon if A.B. plays. Sure. That was just the decision I made. I didn't know how much they would need him and these players against Miami, which it proved they didn't. They scored two defensive touchdowns. But Josh Gordon just two for 19. Julian Edelman just four for 51, including I think one of those was real late in the game, kind of just wasting the clock out. Antonio Brown, on the other hand, ends up with a touchdown. So where are you with this wide receiver core 
uh, you know, we have to wait. This week, the NFL is meeting with the accuser, so I think we will know a whole lot more later this week as to whether Antonio Brown's going to be playing for the Pats this year or if he's going to be on the commissioner's exempt list, and that changes everything. Antonio Brown, I feel like, could very easily become the one for this team if he is active this year. They seem to force feed him. I think he him. is the one yeah. if he's active. Yeah, I agree with you. So that hurts Gordon. That hurts Edelman. But I actually think, assuming that it, like in the world where he is playing this whole year for the Patriots, I think all three are startable options. Wow. Wow. Yeah, I, d I think I'd have a hard time starting Gordon if Antonio I, Brown yeah. ends up. I agree. They have I, New York, Buffalo, Washington coming up. So And it's it's – it's such a wacky game to try and extract any valuable information of where it was Antonio Brown's first game. Brown still didn't play a, a huge amount of snaps for what a wide receiver should be playing. They force fed him the ball. I mean, like this is why is this okay? We're trying to get a re like prove that we made the right decision by signing Antonio Brown. Are they just trying to get him acclimated to the system? And meanwhile, they boat race Miami. Like they didn't have to do anything. By the this way, game. so it's I'll, hard to really know what to tell. Brooks chose to put Mike Evans into the stinkers instead of Sonny Michelle into the stud muffins. But Sonny Michelle, twenty-one carries for, in this game, eighty-five yards and a touchdown. It's nice if you're a Sonny Michelle owner. Yeah, you had to be able to start in this game and get production, or you were gonna. It was gonna be desperate times. So at yes. least status quo with him, and he had a lot more work than than Burkhead did, and did a lot with it. Thankfully, so I'm I'm optimistic about his future, Sammy. Watkins. Now Watkins uh, was, I was six for forty nine. He had thirteen targets. It just didn't happen. I don't remember thirteen targets going I his do. way. Yeah. That, yeah. that makes it feel more like a stinker. Six yeah, for forty nine. I would say so. Six for forty nine is not bad, but you expect more when you get thirteen Mahomes targets. Uh it's pretty nice the fact that he got thirteen targets though. That's a lot. So like if you're concerned about Sammy Watkins, just look at that thirteen targets from Pat Mahomes and know you're fine. The Lizard King catching six of 13 targets, that, that's not the normal. But you know who you do need to be concerned with? Who's that? You got to drop Didi. Your yes. boo boo doo doo. Yeah. You got to drop Didi Westbrook. His future took a. Uh, it, it was blown up when Nick Foles dump. left. Yeah, yeah, Nick Foles left. And then here are some other players. Honorable mentions at wide receiver. And let me know if you're cutting them, okay? MVS was three for 19 against Minnesota. Not cutting him? No, I wouldn't cut him, but. If you yeah, know, he's, he's still a good depth. Piece, Unfortunately, yes. I don't know if you're going to be able to predict the non Devonte Adams wide receiver production in Green Bay. Yep. You, you know, there's the, not the a truth there's is, not a second guy that's willing to stand up and be that guy on the course of every single week. Yeah, I, I agree. And Footland, if you're listening, I'm going to say whether I would <laughs> or wouldn't. But I would always cut a Footland if you're listening to my podcast. Right now, which means you are listening. That's a fair point. It's fair. <laughs> did you but, say if you're listening? Yes, he did. <laughs> <laughs> hey, maybe they're. And if they weren't, we'll never know. Maybe if, that makes them perk up because they're in the middle of like a project or did. something. Well, it then did. you would say, hey, listen up. Not. Wait, are you listening to me? <laughs> if you're listening. <laughs> Even then if you you're will, watching on YouTube, you're still listening. You will hear these words, okay. which are. <laughs> Any questionable wide receivers that are, do you keep, do you cut? I'm always willing to move on from when waivers come. Sure. And it's like, okay, I, I said I wouldn't cut MBS. I'd rather hold them. But if you have got team needs, especially at running back, then absolutely, I'd move on. All, all six of these names are cuts for me. I'll preface it. They're all cuts. Dante Moncrief, Dante Pettis, Danny Amendola, Corey Davis, Cortland Sutton. Five of those six are cuts for me. Because I don't Corey know Davis would never don't. have been on my roster. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. So, tight ends, let's talk about them. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I'm sorry. I, I don't think I would cut Cortland Sutton. I would not cut him either. I would I would definitely cut if him. You, if you're going <laughs> to hold on to Mar Marquez, I think you should hold on to Cortland. That's fine. I I don't mind that. The youth of Cortland Sutton and the unknown, but um, Emmanuel Sanders is by far the number one, so then do you want Joe Flacco's number two-ish target? I don't. All right, tight ends. TJ... Hawkinson, mm. uh oh, one mm. for seven on three targets. Where are the Hawkinson? I mean, we said this even when I said he was my number one waiver claim. I said this is a really bad matchup for him this week. Don't expect for him to have a great week too. I still think his utilization, his snap counts, he should be okay. 
the the hard part about the tight end position is that you have a, a category of a few must start players, right? Mm-hmm. I would say that right now the must start tight ends are Travis Kelsey, Zach Ertz, George Kittle, Evan Ingram. Sure, but OJ Howard is not in that category. He goosed this week. I'd say marking uh, Mark Andrews is Mark, Mark Andrews, Andrews yeah, is yeah. now in that category. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. And I feel like the Walrus might be in that he's, category. Just I would because say he's in that category too. Yes, he's very. He feels very safe at this point. Yes. He Don't. is because he lives near the line of scrimmage. Uh, he lives on the pier. Yeah, we're d- close to shore. Yes. Yeah, yeah I get it, uh, and I agree with you, and that that makes him safe. But there are a number of players that look. If you you spent up, here's the situation for fantasy owners. You spent up on Hawkinson last week to take the shot at a top tier tight end. I would say you're probably pot committed for a few weeks with T.J. Hawkinson. Are you not? You can't just take a one for seven after you spent fab on. on him and then chase the next guy that had a half decent week. Yeah, I agree. The tight end position you're going to have these games. I'm not moving on. My son is playing his first fantasy league ever. He actually won this week. He's oh, very very, nice. very happy. He has Patrick Mahomes. Oh. And his tight he's gonna, end He's going to win more. <laughs> his tight end is OJ Howard, right? Oh man. So he decides and he so he got the goose on Thursday. He says I'm going to pick somebody up. And uh so he drops Anthony Miller, it's an open waiver before the weekend. Drops Anthony Miller. You know who he picked up for next week? Jimmy Graham. Jimmy Graham oh, no. also goosed. Oh, okay? that's a tough lesson. You don't want to – now, he didn't play Jimmy Graham. Right. But – and now he's now he's like dropping Jimmy Graham to get Greg Olson, which is smart. But it, you, that's, what the, that's what can happen. You can be like, oh, my gosh, I got to move yeah. on, and then go get Jimmy Graham and get the same goose out of him you got out of O.J. Howard. You're chasing the dragon. Yes. But – OJ Howard, what the heck, man? What I will do- I will play OJ Howard next week okay. if, I, Arians, if I don't have a better option. <laughs> did, did you hear Bruce Arians' words yeah, on OJ Howard? I did. He said, "Be better." Yeah, get uh, better. Delaney Walker, disappointing. Four yes, for thirty nine. Very disappointing. Uh, but again, tight ends, very fun, very fun position to not have one of the best guys, but. That'll do it for Sneakers of the Week, presented by Odor Eaters. Odor Eaters, the best, the best defense in. Odor defense. The best. Did I say the best defense? <laughs> yes, you did. Odor eaters, the best in odor if defense. If you're listening out there, odor eaters, the best in odor defense. It's a de- Look, sometimes the stink is so bad, mm-hmm. you might as well double up on that defense. Mm-hmm. Okay? Double up. And uh, that'll do it for today's show. We want to thank the studio sponsor, Pristine Auction. Yesterday, Someone snagged a Travis Kelsey signed Chiefs logo football for eighty four dollars nice. at pristineauction.com. I'm surprised Kelsey didn't snag it, those mitts, but somebody got it on the cheap. Hundreds of daily auctions, pristineauction.com. Use the registration code Ballers. Ballers. How are you guys doing through the weekend? We took we took care of League One again. Yes. Yeah, so uh most of my teams uh took a kind of a how, how do you say a dumpski? Big, big <laughs> smelly dumpski over the weekend. <laughs> except for NFL League One, where we back to back, back to back high score of the expert division. We will be sending them another piece of merchandise. Yeah, it's getting expensive for us. All the stuff we it have to send. Is. I mean, really annoying at this point. So, <laughs> how'd you do in Dynasty, Andy? Oh! I smoked Brooks. He sure did. I smoked Brooks. Don't you? Th- he what? wasn't trolling me. He got whooped. Oh, no. Brooks. Goodbye, everybody. The most Brooks thing ever. Goodbye. (laughs) Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.